I get this question a lot that how to improve our chances of getting into good universities in US, right? So the bottom line question is what really matters in your MS applications, right? And what should you focus on? So this video is a strategy video and I'm going to talk about what are the factors that absolutely matter the most um, among all the different list of factors like GPA, extracurriculars, SOPs, LORs. With this uh, list, I hope you will be able to focus on those most important and most critical factors for your MS applications. So let's get started. Hey guys, hope you're enjoying the new videos and if you are, then please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit a like button. Now today's video is about what matters the most in MS applications and we are going to look into this from five angles. The first is strategy, second is profile, third is voice, fourth is talent. And fifth one, I'm keeping a surprise, which I will reveal at the end of this video. So now let's look into these one by one. All right, so let's get into the first point, which is the biggest thing that matters to me is strategy. Okay, so your overall strategy for your applications is the most important thing, because if you don't get this right, then irrespective of how good your profile is or whatever else is there in your profile uh, will not matter if you uh, misplay on your strategy and in the strategy I'm going to talk about two things first is the university shortlisting it is such a crucial step and crucial thing and I am always surprised that people do it always in a hurry or without much thought so you should carefully select the universities to which you're going to apply firstly according to your profile it should be a good fit okay so everybody's profile is different so don't just look at what your friend is applying you have to think from your profile perspective what are the programs that will make sense and secondly according to your priorities also what i mean is let's say you have financial constraints then there is no point in applying to universities you cannot afford such as Columbia or CMU. And I've seen this happen time and time again. People just apply to Columbia. It gives them a good kick when they receive an admit. But then they look at the tuition fee eventually and then they realize they cannot even afford it. Uh, and they cannot go there even if it's the only admit in hand. So my question is why did you apply to it, right? You should not apply to such places. So please be very, very careful in the university shortlisting. Make sure the schools you pick are right for your profile as well as they f work for whatever priorities you have. And this is something again that we have covered in detail in our MS application planning and school short uh, listing masterclass. Feel free to check it out. Second item that comes under strategy is the timing. Okay, now I've seen many, many excellent profiles and they get rejected just because they submitted the application too late or in second round when there, there were much fewer seats available. So for timing, I would say like, you know, I ask my clients to start submitting their applications from November itself, even if the deadline is much later in February or March. So please apply early irrespective to whether the university is rolling admissions or not because ultimately they will start reviewing the applications in the order in which they received it, right? So that's always an advantage. Secondly, if you apply early, it gives you ample time to fine tune your strategy by January or February. Let's say you receive some early admits, then based on the admits you are getting, you can apply to few more schools in January and February time frame. So I think applying early has a lot of advantage and not enough people are utilizing it well then we come to the second point right which is profile and profile refers to everything like all the data points in your profile uh, your scores and everything that makes up for uh, your profile on the paper so in here what i think matters the most is the gpa and your college's reputation okay so i often look for like you know uh, your GPA should be higher than whatever, call it GPA percentage, CGPA, whatever you want to. It should be basically more than 80%. Okay. So if you're grading on a scale of 10, it should be higher than 8 or more than 80%. That is a good comfortable place to be in. But let's say if your GPA is very low, like 6 or 7, then it really restricts you because no matter how good other components of your profile are, 
it'll be very hard to crack a top university with a GPA of 6. Now, combine this with the reputation of your college because I do feel that the admission committee, they are more aware of, let's say, IITs, BITS, Pilani or NITs. So somebody having a 7-point GPA from BITS Pilani is going to be still fine uh, or better off than somebody who has a 8.5 GPA from an interior college in Madhya Pradesh which nobody has heard of, right? So GPA plus your college reputation will determine whether you can truly apply to the top schools or not. And how do you compensate for it? It's very hard to compensate for a low GPA, to be honest, and especially for courses like MSCS, they are more GPA centric. In MIS, sometimes you can still get by uh, with a slightly more average GPA. If you have to com compensate a low GPA, I would say uh, try to like, you know, do maybe external certifications which are graded. So in some cases, I've seen people going for CDAC kind of certifications, which again gives you a GPA sort of thing and score very well there. That can be something that you show that like, you know, you, you can handle the course load and your aptitude is okay. Second way is to also have a very, very good score on your GRE, right? So if you have a high GRE score, that can also to a certain extent go on to show that your aptitude is okay and that you will be able to handle the course load. Thirdly, I would say like, you know, if, if you graduated long back and if you have very long work experience, then GPA may not matter as much. So like, let's say you have eight, nine ex years of experience, then nobody cares that much about what you did eight, nine years ago, right? You can rely more on your professional accomplishments. So you should have some other strong point in your profile. If you want to remove the focus from a low GPA, but low GPA can never be entirely compensated. So just keep that in mind. Please don't mess up your grade. It's it's like it's impossible to salvage that. The next thing that comes under the profile section is your work experience or internships. And these are very, very important, but they matter or they count only if firstly they should be relevant to your areas of interest. Let's say you're applying to MS in CS with a focus on networking. Then if you have networking related projects or work experience in systems and networking, then it's going to be super relevant and it's going to count a lot. But let's say you are applying for computer science and you have some random digital marketing experience or internship that's not going to hold as much weight, obviously. So relevance to your field. So try to find work experience or do internships which are very very relevant to the field that you're applying to secondly in within work experience like kind of employers that you're working for i would suggest going for better brands rather than looking at uh, startups which are not that well known in 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 us right so if you're working at microsoft google kind of places that's going to hold much more weight honestly than working with Zerodha, which is a very, very good startup, but they are not going to know about it in US. So try to pick big brand names if you're building your profile for MS. And lastly, depth of your work also matters, obviously. So let's say you're working at Microsoft, but your project is super shallow or like, you know, you did not achieve much in there. So that does not like, you know, work as well in your favor. But if you worked on a core product, delivered a very solid product or something where you won a lot of accolades from your team, that really counts. So in terms of work experience and internships, try to find relevant jobs in your field. Try to work for bigger brands and there try to do meaningful projects. Another thing in your profile that counts is the publications. This matters if you are applying for thesis kind of programs and of course PhD. So if you're applying for research kind of programs, then it's very important that you have some sort of publications and you can show your potential to do meaningful research. And lastly, GRE. Now GRE used to come much higher in, in, in my priority before COVID, but now that GRE is optional in so many schools, that relevance of GRE has gone down, right? Now, GRE matters even more, especially when the GPA is low. So as we discussed, it it like, you know, uh, it can like really help you if the GPA is low, but you have super high GRE like 325 or 330 plus. Now, um, I would say that uh, 
like you know if you're going for gre then focus more on the quant section rather than the overall score overall score yes we want something more than 320 but in the quant section you want definitely more than 164 165 because that's the average for indian candidates if you have very low quant in gre score actually that that might backfire in your profile so just keep that in mind and try to get a very very quant score of course we are talking for stem uh, careers in us that's why quant is very important okay so now that we have already straightened out our strategy and looked at what factors are going to matter within my profile the third thing i'm going to talk about is the voice your voice in your applications um and what i mean by voice is something that you put up in your sop something that comes in via the lors because these are opinions right these are not facts these are opinions and your thinking your personality um showing through to the admission committee and what they care about is what is this person like what what are their motivations are they going for masters for the right reason will they add value to the classroom or not right will they be a good cultural fit to my school or not so these are the things that we show via our voice and that is where sop becomes very important now remember uh like you know the better your profile is the less you rely on sop so if if there is a iitn with stellar profile they have worked with like you know um maybe top 4 consulting firms done some great projects etc and their gp is also above 8 then like you know even a average sop will be good enough for them but if your profile is average then your sop needs to stand out much more and nobody can afford a badly written sop so no matter how good your profile is and i've seen this in the case of iitns or people with very very good profiles they take they they take sops lors for granted and then they submit something very mediocre in there and they have received rejects from top universities so i think never take your sop for granted but yes if your profile is average then you need to work even harder on your sop and make sure that it really stands out it puts you in a great light in front of the admission committee because competition is like so 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 high right and same thing goes with lors like lors is a third person commenting on your capabilities you want to get lors which shine bright and they are meaningful so like you know so we have covered these two important things in our sop and lor master classes it's a it's such a huge topic that i i can't even summarize it in this video but we have done more videos on this so feel free to check those out and but make sure that like you know you put your good efforts in sop and lors next point in my list is the talent aspect in your profile which is like how talented you are and this usually is reflected in your honors awards and also the kind of global experience that you have uh, via your work or maybe exchange programs or some uh, summer internships that you have done internationally so talent always brings in that perspective that within your peer group like you know uh, you are more talented in some aspect now i do think that when it comes to engineering programs like computer science or electrical engineering they do not care about extra curriculars or your uh, these sort of things as much these things mat can matter slightly more in techno management programs like mis and mem and then they definitely matter a lot more for mba applications and by the way they matter a lot for undergrad applications also but for normal masters in cs extra curriculars do not matter as much but uh, like you know if two if two people are comparable they might like look into somebody being a extraordinary or having a very like you know high honor in in some space standing out because of that kind of thing might play in your favor but this is the last thing in my in my list not very important for engineering programs but can definitely look into it and especially if there is something already in your profile then do try to highlight it what really doesn't count here is ngo experiences donating blood rescuing pets like you know those kind of things are overdone everybody can do it there's nothing special about it uh so don't 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 try to highlight those kind of things because it just shows that like you know you are 
uh, you're doing it just for the sake of it uh try to instead show your deep commitment in some other field which you have pursued over a longer period of time so i told you that i will have a fifth factor at the end of this video so my fifth factor is basically luck okay what matters most in the ms application at number 5 we have luck something that you cannot predict something which is not in your control but to get a good admit i think luck will play a big big factor as it did in mine i didn't think i was like competitive enough for uiuc but i got in and i feel lucky and i've seen a time and time again i've seen some stellar profiles getting rejected from safe schools like usc and i've seen some mediocre profiles getting into competitive schools like georgia tech right and the simple reason for that is like you know while your profile might be good you don't know where you fall in the curve that particular year what is your competition like right so those are always like like you know a black box for us how the admission committee is evaluating you in like in comparison to your other competitors is something we will never know so we don't know what happened there and this is why we apply to enough number of schools to keep our chances uh, alive so luck you cannot do anything about it but yes you can improve your uh, chances of being lucky simply by improving your strategy that is applying to the right set of the schools applying to enough number of schools and applying early so these sort of things can make you more lucky but beyond that just hope for the best do your part as i always say focus on the inputs and not on the outputs if you do those things i think luck is eventually bound to strike so so those were the factors that like you know play the most important role in the ms applications from my side and i hope this will give you a perspective on what to focus on and where do you want to spend more time during these next crucial 2 3 months so i hope your applications are going on well and that these videos are helping you put up your best foot forward i wish you all the best and i will see you next time with again a fresh new video until then take care bye bye